Uh, the next one I want to look at is aggregations. Now, aggregations can be a real problem, particularly in data warehouse type environments. Um, the real problems, often the problems occur when you need to do several aggregations. Imagine you want to sum up your sales by customer, by city, and by country. You want to sum them up by day, by month, by year, by products, and by channel, and so on. All of these aggregations may mean a complete pass through the data. And that can be disastrous. You want to aggregate on multiple dimensions, it's multiple passes. Now, you can get around a lot of this from 9 onwards by using the group by roll-up, um, group by roll-up and cube functions. I'm not going to talk about them now. We'll have to talk about roll-up and cube another day. Um, but what I do want to show is that multiple aggregations which people tend to be very frightened of, and justifiably so, are not necessarily a bad thing. Not necessarily a bad thing at all. Um, as long as they're done the correct way. And that's where, guess what, the syntax you use, your equivalent SQL, may mean that aggregations are not a problem. Now, to the example I'm going to give, I'll just need to create a table. I'll create a table with about 80,000 rows, once I've spelt correct correctly. That will be one table. I'm constructing a, I am constructing a pretty artificial example here, of course, but it will do for the purpose of showing SQL equivalence and the effects of aggregations on execution plans. And I'll create another table. That was foo, wasn't it? I'll create a table called goo. Let's select star from foo. That gives me two tables with about 80,000 rows each. So, first query might be, I'm, I'm not actually going to run it, I'll save time now just by guessing explain plan. The explain plan for Let's say I simply want to count the rows. How do I count the rows in my tables? Count star, select, explain plan four, select star, no, select star, select count star, select count star from, select star from foo, union, all, select star from the other table. So, how many rows do I have in total? I'm not really interested, but I am interested in the execution plan. So, select star from table. And now I need to use DPMS X plan display. Oops. Right. Okay, <clears throat> so what did it do? It did what I told it to do. It scanned both tables, unioned, sorted. Take an alternative and equivalent SQL. So let me explain plan four. Select, say, sum of something, sum C from, select star, Oh, not star, do select count star from foo, union all, select count, I need to give it an alias, C, from my first table, unioned, to the second table. Right, I'm sure you can see that's an equivalent SQL. It's going to give the same results. What execution plan does it come up with? It looks a lot worse, doesn't it? That first plan looks really, really efficient. Okay, we had to scan the table. We had to scan the table. We had to count the results. Clearly, how else can you get the results? How else can you get the count? Well, you could get it this way, but it looks far worse. What I now have is I've scanned the table, sure, but then I've done a source and aggregation scan the other table, couldn't get out of that, source and aggregation. Then a third one, this looks appalling. There's three sorts, three aggregations. Surely that's going to be worse. Well, let's actually run them and see if it is. 
So if I run the statements, this was my simple statements. I actually run it. And it's taking a fair few seconds to come through, and there come the rows. Now, looking at the timings for that and how it actually works, there's what happened, there's the plan it used, and it took two and a half seconds. Fair enough. Move on then to the other one, my other variation of it, my equivalent SQL, which did three aggregations, not one. John. Yes. Pardon, quick question. Please. Uh, I, think it, I think it's dynamic sampling, the answer. I'll take a guess here. The question is, do you need to gather stats on these new tables for the optimizer to know how to run these queries correctly? In this particular case, I don't, because it has no choices. Now, there are, in this case, no indexes. There are no indexes, so it really doesn't make any difference. And it's interesting to note that the dynamic sampling is, in fact, not perfect. Those tables are identical. You can see that, the actual rows, the tables are identical. But the dynamic sampling, rather interestingly, didn't get the precise figures. But that will not be distorting this example. Very good. Thank you, John. So running that one, that was quicker, wasn't it? But, well, that's hardly the proof. But let's see this more complex one. So the previous one took two and a half seconds. This took about half a second. So the far more complex plan with three aggregations, in fact, was, let's see, that was 0.68 seconds. It was close on, it was about four times as quick. I hadn't expected as good a benefit as that. So my compl more complex plan, the equivalent SQL, executed in a quarter the time. Uh, and so if you're interested in why, uh, the answer is pretty straightforward. It's because of the number of rows that are being passed back. At this stage, I'm passing, as we see in the A rows, I'm passing 145,000 rows up through a view to be sorted. Whereas in this stage, I'm reducing 72,000 rows to one. I'm reducing 72,000 rows to one. So I'm passing a total of two rows back for the final aggregation. And that's why it's so much faster. Uh, but Oracle was simply incapable of understanding that. So what conclusion can we draw from this? Don't be frightened of aggregations. Don't be frightened of complex plans. In some cases, we'll find that the more complex plan can in fact be far faster, even if it involves materializing views at various stages.